Hi guys, my name is Anton. I'm from um, Algarve Trail Riding Tours. It's a business I uh, run and uh, operate here in the Algarve on the west coast. And we actually run five trail bikes. We have three SWM RS 300s and at the moment we have two of the AJP PR5. So this little video is to give you a very quick rundown, a shakedown, to give you my feedback on what I think about the AJP PR5. This is the liquid cooled, the water cooled version. This is the, the, the slightly more modern version. Um, having said that, AJP has just released the SPR range, which includes a 250. The SPR uh, is the designated Enduro Stroke Racing range, which is why it's got the R. Um, and so I guess this one is uh, the slightly older model, therefore. So this particular one here in front of you is a 2018 model, and they ran up to 2020 before the SPR range was released. Prior to that, um, pretty much the same bike, but it did have an air-cooled engine based on the old Honda uh, 230, the Honda air-cooled 230 engine. So, I've actually had five of these bikes. I've run them, operated them for four years. And I have fallen in love with them. I do kind of favour cheering for the little guy anyway. Um, and certainly in the realm of motorbikes, when you've got KTM, Husqvarna dominating the world, it's really nice to hear about small businesses hanging on in there and challenging for a spot. Now, I came across AJP. I, I live in Portugal, obviously. It's a, a Portuguese brand. Um, and I came across them when I was riding with uh, a couple of guys that I got to know. One of them had the PR4. I experimented on it made some decisions and um, thought about my own future, which was going to be the trail riding tours, test rode a PR5 and decided that PR5s were the right bike for me at that time. So can I just clarify something? A lot of people, I, I've read reports over the years, a lot of people think AJP or the PR5 uh, is a Chinese motorbike or a Taiwanese or a Korean motorbike. I've seen all sorts of things. Let's just put something to bed straight away. It's a Portuguese manufactured bike. It does, however, use a Chinese manufactured engine. The engine is the is is from Zongshen, which is the largest, as far as I know, anyway, the largest uh, motorcycle engine producer in China. Um, but the rest of it is completely put together uh, in the north of Portugal. Um, a small factory. Just a, around about 25 people operating everything. Um, but it's de most definitely a European bike. So, getting back to what I really want to tell you. Operating them for four years, what do I think about them? These bikes are cheap compared to other big name brands. With a cheap bike, you would expect perhaps not to get very good performance or not really to get value for money. That's where AGP has stepped in and could corner the market for cheaper bikes. They, they are excellent value for money. Um, and I actually used one, actually I did use this one, to race uh, a few races in the Portuguese National Enduro Championships. Um, and I think it surprised quite a few guys when I was going past them on their KTMs. Uh, I think it surprised them. I had a few guys come over to talk to me about the PR5 and it's a very, very, very good bike. It, it's great fun to ride. It, it's wonderful to ride. I really, really, really enjoy it. This bike, the PR5, to me is a hybrid. It's a bit like KTM Freeride, perhaps. Um, it's kind of trialsy orientated, but it's, it, it's a full-size bike. Um, but it does have some very unique qualities, which, to my mind, makes this bike stand out amongst the rest. Gears 1 and 2 are very, very, very low ratio, so you can do super tight technical riding up riverbeds, over rocky boulders, things like that. This bike has helped me increase my experience in harder uh, enduro riding um, because of its trials-like-esque-ness in, in these low gears. Um, gears three through six, it's just like riding a regular bike. They, they, this one produces around about 28 brake horsepower. Um, 
it's not the fastest bike out there but it's enough when we're riding here in the forest it's absolutely fine it, it's really enough i've had professional riders come along i've given them this and I was very pleasantly surprised to get their feedback to, to hear them say they like this bike um it's super light it's just over 100 kilos and uh, with the with the gas in there it's about 107 kilos so it's super light and um, because of this low down grunt that's why it gets away with not having massive brake horsepower it will drive you up very steep mountains um, the nickname for this bike is the goat uh, a lot of people know them as the goat they will climb anything and they will embarrass bigger names but bigger more expensive names for sure um so that's the good side it's a wonderful bike to ride really good fun if you're into sort of more tight technical riding it's great of course that's the positive side there's always something negative about any bike any bike that you buy to me the negative side is some of the parts are the cheap parts for example the wheel bearings it's a very easy one to, to pick on straight away it comes to mind straight away the wheel bearings lasted just over a month or something when I bought this bike it's a very easy fix but it's a little bit frustrating in the beginning some of the components the the HT lead broke down very early on I had it for about six months or so and I swapped out the HT lead and the spark plug cap as well for for a better one so some of these smaller items are cheap and it's a little bit frustrating, but you know, for a few euros, you can do very simple upgrades. Um, so this bike doesn't have many upgrades on it. I've put a bigger bash plate, a, a full synthetic plastic bash, bash plate on there. I've um, ordered an upgraded ECU, and that is it. And it, it's a really very good bike. I, I was happy to race it in the Enduro Championships. Um, I didn't lose <laughs> I didn't come first of course uh, but I didn't lose um, and so I, th I think it, it's it's um, it's a good bike so if you are looking for a cheap entry-level enduro stroke trail bike then you should really look at this bike and consider it um, I have two at the moment um, and I have three SWMs but I've had five of these over the years and the reason why I've gone for the 300cc sized engine is because to me these lack a little bit of power at the very top end. Now the SPR 250 that has just been released I believe does have an uh, option for a 280cc barrel top end and I think that's a very good compromise. It's, it's the 250 with a bigger top end gives you just a little bit more horsepower and it sounds like a very good idea added to which the SPR range now is um, a slightly bigger frame and more racing orientated um, so uh, so it's slightly upgraded over this version if you're looking for a cheap entry bike weekend fun trail riding bike think about this AJP it, it's a very good entry level fun bike um, for my clients, I have a mixture of very experienced and obviously some clients come along that have no off-road experience. This bike is able to do both those things. It's able to provide an uh, entry-level ride for somebody who hasn't got the experience. Equally, somebody who's very experienced can get on this bike and really have a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. So, I, I, I know it's an unusual name. Not many people have heard about it. But if you come across one and are thinking of trying it, consider buying it and be prepared to do a few alterations, some wheel bearings and things like that, very simple stuff, and you will have a very good bike. I've had this one four years. It's never broken down in four years. I've raced it, I use it in and out every week when it's not COVID uh, with clients. Um, it has about 8,000 kilometers on there. Uh, it's never broken down other than the HT lead which happened in the garage at the time it's never broken down on the trail I can't say that for every bike of course but um, if you're worried about uh, reliability issues it's as reliable as any other bike out there so that was it really just wanted to give you a quick idea of what this bike is about please don't think it's a Chinese com a completely Chinese bike it's not true 
Um, it's made in Portugal with a very experienced team, Antonio Pinto, uh, AJ, P stands, uh, AJ P stands for Antonio Pinto, I think his brother was Joao, uh, not sure about that. Um, it, so it's put together in Portugal, um, it's a small team, um, but the big bike that AJP is producing now is the PR7, so that's garnering a lot of international attention, and subsequently AJP, the name is becoming known much more than it was even three or four years ago. Check the SPR range out, some lovely enduro bikes. My dream bike at the moment is the 310 from AJP. Um, maybe as soon as we start getting clients back after COVID, uh, that might be something that I will look into buying for the future. Okay guys, sorry it went on a little bit, but I hope it's been a relatively useful uh, video for you. Thanks very much. Cheers.